So, I have seen a few of these guys going around recently and remind me when I first played Sea of Thieves way back in the alpha. Sea of Thieves is a simple game to learn but incredibly difficult to master. As new players are coming in all the time, I thought it was time to give you some tips for beginners. Without further ado, here's 10 tips for new players in 10 minutes. Before you do anything, you need to play this fantastic tool tale aimed at players such as yourself. This will tell you most of the basic stuff that you need to know, will give you a couple of neat cosmetics and some coinage to start off. It will help contextualise the world of Sea of Thieves and is the canon first voyage. To access this, simply reach the adventure and arena select screen, then press X to begin the maiden voyage. Take your time, explore and listen to the Pirate Lord for everything to prepare you for the journey to come. Oh, and that intro screen is pretty beautiful. I use this derogative insult as a tongue-in-cheek way of making fun of those who bitch about the sword. The sword is the best weapon in the game. Use it, and use it until you've fully studied the blade. The sword is the best weapon because it has infinite uses, high damage, can enhance your mobility, and takes advantage of the close quarter PvP featured in this game. Master the sword lunge for traversing water. To do this, simply stand on the edge of a platform and hold the attack button. The lunge will send you flying and help you board a ship, escape a ship, or return to yours in a quick flash. Learn about blocking. If you block sword strikes, you're already better than 80% of sword users. Simply hold LT and face your opponent, you should block their strikes. Once they hit your sword three times, now you can retaliate. If someone moans at you for being a sword lord or even a double gunner, tell them they can shove a sunny splash tail where the sun don't shine. This one is going to come as a shock. Stop using the blunderbuss and sword at the same time. You severely limit your effectiveness against those who carry a pistol or sniper because they can simply stay away from you and you can't do shit. Along with this, the blunderbuss is useless beyond a few feet and even worse, in the water. Personally, I carry a pistol and a sword as most engagements are medium to short range. The sniper deals a lot of damage but it's difficult to use, slow to reload and hard to use if you're on a controller. The pistol has great hip fire, fast reload and can fire faster than someone can eat food so you can quickly two tap your enemies. Use what you're most comfortable with, unless it's a blunderbuss and sword. Food is the best thing on the planet, both socially and nutritionally, but in Sea of Thieves food is so good they will bring you back from the brink of death in a few bites. Know the effects of food and how much health it restores for you. Banana is the weakest and only gives you back 20% of your health. Rest in peace good banana, anniversary took you away from us too soon. Then it's coconuts that give you 30%. Pomegranates for 40%, mangoes for 50%, and pineapples for 100%, which you get two bites of. Meat and fish gives you 50%, has two bites, and gives you overheal when cooked. Overheal or health regen kicks in when you haven't taken damage for 15 seconds, and will slowly replenish your health. This will save your life both in PvE and PvP. Always prioritise any food over bananas, and just use them for topping up your health. Carrying bananas into combat is a death sentence, so only use them if you haven't got anything else available. Meat is available at any island, so hunt chickens, pigs, and snakes where possible. Cook it while you're sailing, and download the Sea of Thieves cooking timer to make sure you never burn your food again. Food can easily decide most fights, and it will make sure that your crew stays afloat. Stocking up food, cannibals and planks is essential to survival. Seriously, there are a few ways to stock up, but this is what I usually do. Empty the outpost, especially when spawning on Ancient Spire or Dagger Tooth. There's a decent number of supplies on your outpost and make sure you don't waste them. Go to a fort. I use forts to gather supplies as there are plenty of barrels to get you what you need. My favourite for this is the Crow's Nest, but all of them are good except for Fort of the Damned and Lost Gold Fort. Me and my homies hate Lost Gold Fort. Use rowboats. See a rowboat? It will have lots of supplies. Empty yours and reattach the new one. Do this every time you can see one on your island. When passing an island and you don't want to stop, just shoot over with a cannon. As you can carry 10 cannibals, 5 wood and 5 food items. Just make sure your inventory is empty before you shoot over. Merchant lost shipments are really good for supplies, as the first clue often has barrels with lots of supplies in them and a shipwreck that will have even more. Plus, you get a ton of loot from it, so... Win-win. Any shipwreck will have a load of supplies and often cooked meat and cursed cannibals. If you're brave enough, you can get loads of supplies from ghost ships, although, if you're new, these world events might be a bit difficult. Each ship has a chance to drop a supply crate with many supplies. If you follow these tips, you'll be ready for your adventure for hours to come. This is a tip you need to learn early on, because I see even pirate legends not understanding this. There are a few rules, but if you keep these in mind, you will be able to catch or escape most crews on the seas. The sloop is the fastest against the wind. If you're sailing with a dead wind, where the wind is blowing directly towards you, turn your sails so they face the wind, so the livery is facing the oncoming wind. Using this, I've caught players and easily escaped enemies on so many occasions. It doesn't make sense, but it's how the mechanics work. 
trust me on this. Other than that, the Brig is the fastest with a crosswind and the Galleon with a tailwind. Just remember this and you'll be a more proficient sailor than most pirates you'll meet on the seas. Sloop sails against the wind when you turn them flat are the fastest instance against the wind you're going to find in the game, so make sure you use it. The biggest mistake I see for new crews or solo players is anchor abuse. Yes, dropping your anchor all the time is wrong, but it does have its uses. If you're coming to stop an island, raising the sail is the best. Make sure you leave plenty of space to drift in, because your ship still has momentum once the sail is raised. Your momentum will depend on which way the wind is blowing, so it will take a little bit of practice to get used to. I recommend this because it will teach you how to control your ship. If you do need to drop your anchor, make sure it's raised immediately once the sails have been raised. Too many times have I seen a ship with its sails down and anchor down being a sitting duck. Hashtag Stop Anchor Abuse 2021 The only place kegs should be is on other players' ships. You should never, ever bring powder kegs onto your ship. Why? Well, since the introduction of the firebomb, one single firebomb can set your master blaze and blow up your kegs, or worse, if someone manages to get up there, you can kiss your ship goodbye. The only instance you should bring one on your ship is at the end of your lost shipment voyage and head straight to an outpost. Keep in mind that a stronghold keg, also called a nuke, will sink any ship in seconds, and even if it explodes in the mast, will do massive damage, along with dropping all your masts. If you finish a skull fort, blow up the kegs as soon as possible. I had a pair on a solo sloop do this while I was hiding on their ship, and it made the heist so much more difficult. If you do want to take on the Fort of the Damned, destroy the Stronghold kegs because 90% of the time they'll be used to betray you or a Tucker will use it to take your Athena chests. Do not harpoon kegs either because they will blow up in your face if it touches the side of your hull. I'm just going to say you're going to struggle with this in your first few hours of the game. While the game is very simple, there are many players who will be better than you and will steamroll you. PvP is a big part of the game and it isn't going away, so if you can't beat them, join them. Always assume every player is out to get you and alliances will be broken over loot. I will go into more depth about PvP in a separate video because it's a whole other beast. There are a few facts you have to accept and this will alleviate a lot of the frustration. Firstly, PvP is a normal part of the game. Don't be upset when, not if, it doesn't go your way. You will lose a lot of loot and worse, your time. But keep in mind, everyone goes through this and it's not toxic to sink people, even new players. The best thing you can do is accept it and look at what you did wrong because being better prepared next time is more valuable than gold or your time. Fights will be based on skill, but luck will be a huge factor. Sometimes you'll get krakened, sometimes you'll sail into a floating keg, sometimes you'll be killed by a lucky cannibal. It's a part of the game and never ever feel bad about something that isn't in your control. It's frustrating, but take pride in the fact you didn't lose because of your decision making. Just remember your foes will be on the receiving end of this stuff just as much as you are. Thirdly, ship combat is tough and is always decided with boarding. The aim of the game will be trying to get an anchor down and stop your foes from repairing. Nine times out of ten, this is the most effective strategy. If you can prevent that, you will be one frustrating customer to deal with. Watch the ladders and use your sword to keep people off them. Fourth, you can avoid PvP. Keep your head on a swivel and scan the horizon all the time. Ships are rendered from very far away, so use this to your advantage. If a ship is coming straight towards you, they don't want to be friends. Make sure you're ready to run or be ready to fight. If you're on a sloop and by yourself, I often stand on the back to see over the waves. And finally, the best way to practice is to fight. When you've sold your loot and you're planning to log off, scan around to see if there are any ships nearby. If you've got supplies to burn, then why not go ahead and fight them? It's a great way to learn PvP while risking very little. You're logging off anyways, so take the opportunity. Sloops, brigs and galleons, it doesn't matter. This is how I like to practice and I still do with hundreds of hours in this game. If you abide by these five truths, then half the battle is won. Persevere, be patient, but most importantly, don't take things too seriously. This last tip is a two for one, and no, I'm not going to charge you extra. Find a dedicated crew, even if it's one other person. This will allow the workload to be spread, improve your odds in PvP, and make everything that a bit faster. If you can find a crew for a brig or galleon, even better. Use the Xbox looking for group, use Discord, use Reddit, you will find people to play with, and I've met some fantastic players on this game. Sea of Thieves is a social game, and having people to chat with in the downtime will improve your experience so much. Don't be shy, the community is 99% amazing, and don't let the naysayers say otherwise. You will encounter toxic players, but block and report them, it's that simple. With that being said, if you can get good solo, then you can beast this game. Playing solo will teach you how to manage your ship, beat larger ships, and will harden you for the adventures to come. Many players are comfortable being able to use their numbers to win, and often rely on this, but when you come across one or two man crews who have done a lot of solo slooping, then you will have the battle for your life. I might do a full guide on this because I played pretty much solo for the first year, and I think it really helped me improve massively. Remember, the game is a slow burn, and if you keep this in mind, you'll be just fine. So, there we go. 
there's 10 tips for new players in 10 minutes. I know there's a few of these going around, but I added some of my own philosophies that helped me out when playing this game. If I helped you out or you learned something new, drop a like and subscribe. As always, I'm trying to show off my diversity as a creator, so there'll be a lot of variety on this channel. We've got more guides, lore and speculation coming soon, so stick around. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.